in their wild or natural state. We talked out the principle of breaking and tying them together for orderly production. Furthermore, we talked about paying particular attention to the female savage and her offspring for orderly future planning. Then, more recently, we stated that by reversing the positions of the male and the female savages, we had created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever, unless a phenomenon occurred, which have occurred, and reshifted the positions of the male and the female savages. Through this truth, our experts warned us about the possibility of this phenomenon occurring. occurring. For they say that the mind has a strong drive to correct and recorrect itself over a period of time. If I can touch some substantial original historical base and they advised us that the best way to deal with the phenomenon is to shave off the brute's mental history. Read it again. If I can touch some substantial original historical base and they advised us that the best way to deal with the phenomenon is to shave off the brute's mental history and create a multiplicity of phenomenon of illusions. That's what y'all dealing with. That's why I got 105 different identities asking the brothers and sisters who they are, many brothers. The phenomena is to shave off the brute's mental history and create a multiplicity of phenomena of illusions so that each illusion will twirl in its own orbit something similar to to floating balls in a vacuum. This creation of a multiplicity of phenomena of illusions entails the principles of crossbreeding the nigger and the horse as we stated above, the purpose of which is to create a diversified division of labor, thereby creating different levels of labor and different values of illusion at each connecting level of labor. The results of which is the severance of the points of original beginnings for each sphere illusion. Since we feel that the subject matter may get more complicated as we proceed in laying down our economic plan concerning the purpose, reason, and the effect of crossbreeding horse and niggers, we shall lay down the following definition terms for future generations. Number one, orbiting cycle meaning a thing turning in a given path. Number two, axis meaning upon which or around which a body turns. Number three, phenomenon meaning means something beyond ordinary conception and inspires awe and wonder. Number four, Multiplicity means a great number. Number five means a globe. Number six, crossbreeding a horse means taking a horse and breeding it with an ass and you get a dumb, backward ass, long-headed mew that is not reproductive nor productive by itself. Number seven, crossbreeding niggers means taking so many drops of good white blood and putting them into as many nigger women as possible. Varying drops by the various tone that you want and then letting them breed with each other until the circle of colors appear as you desire. What this means is this. Put the, put the niggers in the horse is the breeding pot, I guess in the breeding pot Mix some asses and some good white blood, and what do you get? You got a multiplicity of colors of ass backward, unusual niggers running, tied to backward ass, long headed mules. The other sterile, one constant, the other dying. 
we keep the nigger constant, for we may replace the mule for another tool. Both mule and nigger died tied to each other, neither knowing where the other came from, and neither productive for itself nor without each other. Controlled language, crossbreeding completed for further severance from their original beginning, we must annihilate the mother tongue. We must annihilate the mother tongue, meaning the mother language of both the nigger, the new nigger, and the new mu, and institute a new language that involves the new life's work of both. You know, language is a peculiar institution. It leads to the heart of a people. The more a foreigner knows about the language of another country, the more he is able to move through all levels of that society. Therefore, if the foreigner is an enemy of the country to the extent that he knows the body of the language, to that extent is the country vulnerable to attack or invasion of a foreign culture. For example, you take a slave, if you teach him all about your language, he will know all your secrets, and he is then no more a slave, for you can fool him, you can't fool him anymore. And being a fool is one of the basic ingredients of an incidence to the maintenance of the slavery system. So that's the the infamous Woody Lynch letter. Saying a lot, right? That's how they made us a slave. They used those methods. And we could see from what they were saying, they said it was a foolproof method that could last for decades, generations, gener generations, till now. See, so I want to look at um, how you've heard all this said, and here we are now trying to find our way back to the Most High. Back to Amashakyabashai, back to knowing what we need to know, because it has been a phenomenon. This truth, we being Hebrew Israelites, is a phenomenon, a real phenomenon, beyond what anybody can come to believe and see. But it's real, because we right here with it. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The book of Deuteronomy. It's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. So Deuteronomy 28 and 15, the Most High told us this. He said, But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken, meaning listen, unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, your power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statute, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You see, this is what he told us. So now, I want to jump to verse 49 and verse 50. It say, The Most High shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. I think America just celebrated 4th of July, 1776, from the end of the earth, way over here. And coming from Spain, coming here to the shores of the Western Hemisphere, as swift as the eagle flyer. What's the symbol of America? The eagle. The eagle. The bald eagle. A nation whose tongue, that's that language, thou shalt not understand. See? Remember what he said about the tongue, the language, I told you men the language, when he said uh, uh, control language, the last thing he said, he said cross-breeding completed 
for further severance from their original beginning, we must annihilate the mother tongue of both the new nigger and the new mule and institute a new language that involves the new life's work of both you, of both, lucky. The new life works of both, right? So it's saying, you know what I mean, 28 and 49. The most I shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyer, giving you a sign of what they said would be, the eagle. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. That's why you heard them say. That's the language. A nation of fierce continents, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Remember you say they got to put the old against the young? These are the things that they have done and perpetrated. Now, let's go to the book of Baruch, the fourth chapter in the Apocrypha. Baruch, the fourth chapter. And we're going to look at verse 15. Luke the fourth chapter in the verse 15 it says for he hath brought a nation upon them from far a shameless nation and of a strange language see strange language who neither re reference old man nor pity child and we said pit put the old against the young they didn't care about the old people. Old people worked until their bones came out of their bodies. They would still have to get up there and work. They worked until they died. And the child was not regarded. You heard what they said about a child. They worked from a child all the way to death. Number 16. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. So this is talking about the land is speaking, the land of Israel is speaking concerning us, we the twelve tribes of Israel. Say, these have carried away the dear beloved. And you look at verse 36 of Baruch the third chapter it says he have found out all the way of knowledge and have given it unto Jacob his servant and to Israel his beloved so we as the Israelites are the most highest beloved no one else this is what it's saying that's why when you see here in verse 16 of chapter 4 of Baruch it says these have carried away the dear beloved the dear Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, children of the widow. The widow is talking about the land. The land is saying we the children of the widow because the widow lost her children and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. You see? Now, I want to look at Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. To show you their mindset. In Wisdom Solomon 2 and 10. This is what they thought. This is what they think. And this is their mindset. Wisdom Solomon 2 and 10. Let us oppress the poor and righteous man. Come on. Do we need to go to Deuteronomy 6.25? The man that keep the commandments of the Most High. That's righteous man. That's only the Israelites. Or, if not, then what religion that you're involved in is keeping the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws. If thou can say. I'm waiting. Ain't nobody crying and, and screaming about their religion that's keeping all of them. 
holy days, the feast days of the Most High, and the days that we say we're going to keep. We're going to keep ourselves for getting the victory of our enemies. What days are those? Name those days. Along with the Most High's holy days that he said, these are my feast days. And days that we say we're going to keep in getting the victory of our enemies just like you have 4th of July. That's getting the victory over the British for the Americans, Edomites. So, here we are. Was Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 10, it's their mindset. It said, let us oppress the poor righteous man. That's not the two-thirds of our people, that's the one-third. Let us not spare the widow. Hear that? Let us not spare the widow. That's a woman that has lost her husband in death. Nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. As they say, they don't care about the old, they don't care about the young. Let, us strength, let our strength, which is their military, be the law of justice. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worse. Hear that? Now, we're the feeble. They say nothing to them. Nothing worse. Just their mindset. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous. That's why you got to look at this. Why? Because he is not for our turn. Just their turn right now. You in their turn. That's why it says, let us wait for the let's let us wait for the righteous, right? That's why you look at Revelation 12. In 12. Now, but understand, understand this, man. It says, therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe, destruction. Woe mean destruction to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Those that's in the earth, those that's out there in the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. See? Verse 17. And the dragon, which is the devil, which is Satan, which is the spirit of Esau, and the beast, and all of them. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. That's just like I just read to you in uh, Luke the fourth chapter. It said the devil. Then it came back and said Satan, right? When you look at verse 9, it says, And the great dragon, all these the same, was cast out, the old serpent, that old serpent in Genesis 3rd chapter dealt with Eve. You know, so you ain't gonna surely die. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. See, they are the same. What color are they? Uh, verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon. See, the dragon, the serpent, the devil, Satan, all of them red. And he saw when you look at Genesis 25, 25, most of said the first came out red and they called his name Esau. Came out, came out red, hairy all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So they define him as red, right along with here. I mean, it's coded, so make it mean something different. Because ain't nobody going to really deal with it, you know, or deal with it if you can. So verse 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, which represented the 12 tribes of Israel, in Genesis, excuse me, in Jeremiah 6 and 2. We have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely, a beautiful, and delicate woman, symbolically. And went to make war with the remnant, that's the one-third of her seed. Which do what? Which keep the commandments of the Most High. You see? Which keep the commandments of the Most High. Not those that say we're not under the commandments, we're not under the law, but those that keep the commandments of the Most High. And have the testimony of a Mashiach Yavashai. That's us. Nobody else have that. What other people is talking about repent? Well, so I'm telling you to fear the most high. Fear the most high. First and foremost. Fear the most high. And repent and keep his law, set commandments. We the only people that's pushing that. Who else is? Name them. Or you're gonna be able to tell your tell me that your religion is keeping the law, set commandments of the most high. <laughs> See, look at uh Isaiah 40. Uh, 54 and 5 and 6. For thy maker is thine husband. See? So this is symbolic. The Most High host is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, 
the power of the whole earth shall be shall he be called. But the most I have called thee as a woman forsaken. See? The dragon was wroth with the woman, so the most high has called us as a woman forsaken, symbolically. And grieved in spirit. And a wife of youth, when thou was refused, said thy power. Okay? So, going back to Wisdom of Solomon. See what they said? They said, verse 12, it said, Therefore let us lie in wait for the righteous. That's the remnant that we just read about in Revelation 12 and 17. Because he is not for our turn. We ain't for their turn. All the wickedness that we see that's against the Most High, they didn't set themselves up to be the Most High. I don't think so. And he is clean contrary to our doings. Yeah, because they dealing with abominations, sins, filthy, nasty acts. He upbraided us with our offending the law. You hear that? He upbraided us with our offending the law. What law are you talk about? What do you think? What law you think is talking about? It's talking about the laws of the Most High. Yeah. Y'all not keeping the moral laws. You're not keeping the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws. You're selling everything and putting everything out there to make more people wicked as, wicked as, wicked as, wicked as can be. Us with our offending the law. The Most High wrote those laws with his finger. The work of the Most High. Yeah. We are breaking you with you offending the law. And all you poach up being preachers talking about we ain't under the law. That's why you... Edomized. Mm, that's a new one. I got to put down in the list. Edomized. I got. Mm. Okay. A brother with our offending the law and objected to our infamy, the transgressions, the transgressings of our education. Yeah. You teach your education, you teach your education so you can be a good servant, still be a slave, as you just read or we just read in the William Lynch letter. No entrepreneurship. Where are our corporations at, brothers and sisters? We're gonna see that all this stuff was planned against us because we broke the most high's laws. So this they're talking to you. He professes to have the knowledge of the most high, yes. But a little that we do know. According to what the word says, the Bible says, nobody else bringing it like us. He professes that he have the knowledge of the Most High, and he calleth himself the child of the Most High. We are the sons of the Most High. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He was made to reprove their thoughts. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. You know, but see, a lot of y'all think they're your friends. Y'all, a lot of y'all don't believe this. You Israelites, because you think he's the most high. You still believe it in your mind that they the power. Who's the power? The so-called white man's the power in your mind. But the most high is the power. Forever and ever and ever. And you're going to let everybody know. It's going to be shown. He professes to have the knowledge of the most high. And he has called himself the child of the most high. He was made to reprove our thoughts. You hear that? We're made to reprove, reprove their thoughts in the way they think. He is grievous unto us even to behold. You hear that? You don't even like looking at us even to behold. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. That's why you look at, when you look at yourself as an Israelite, do this fit you? Or are you, as a man or a woman, you fit right into the world, that fashion of the world? Or are you contrary, <clears throat> first by sight, when they see you, oh, you're not, you don't look like everybody else in the world, or do you look like everybody else in the world? They talk to you, and your conversation is worldly, 
but it's not spiritual. Like I said, people ain't talking about the most high. We'll see everybody talking about themselves. I, 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 me, me, me. Everybody about themselves. And a lot of you women are like that. You know, men in the truth, they talk about, they talk about, we talk about the most high. In this Bible, and about our history and so forth. And you better look at it. How is somebody going to help you that you don't even talk about? You're not even interested in it. But you say you're interested in it, but you don't really talk about it. He is grievous to us to even behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. You hear that? Our ways are another fashion. And they're not going to ever understand it as it is written. They're not going to understand this fashion that we're in. And being Hebrew Israelites at this day and time. Something beyond they can imagine. Because our life is supposed to be of another fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits, bunch of phonies. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. You hear that? How a man and a man going to get married? A woman and a woman going to get married? That's cleanness? Enjoying each other up, up they, whatever. Doing this, doing that. Raising children to accept this. And it's Okay. When the most I said in Leviticus 20 and 13, just an example for one. If a man lie with mankind and he shall a woman, both of them have committed abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That's the law from the most high. And he tell you in Romans 1 and 25 down, he give you all these characteristics of them. Even with women, being leaving a natural use of a, a man lying with each other and men with men. And he tell you in verse 32, if you and you have pleasure with them that's doing this, you deserve death too. That's what it says. Let me read it so y'all don't just take, I'm saying you deserve death. And twist it and make it mean something different. Let's read it. All these characteristics of those as of such. Romans 1. And 25. Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever? I'm not dealing with that because they put that in there to represent Him, the Creator. No, I don't think so. For this cause the Most High gave them up unto vile affections. You look at where they put it at. I'm going to do a lesson. I did a lesson, but I don't think I recorded it with my class where I looked at where how they strategically put AME in in this Bible. Because is that a Mashiach ever shot name? I don't think so. That's what it says in Revelation 3.14. It says, verse 26 says, For this cause, the Most High, and they, they inserted that. For this cause, the Most High gave them up unto vile affections. You know? That's why it tells you in Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 12, telling you what they're what they, what they thinking, what they're saying to each other. Whether you know or not, you know now, if you're listening. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. And he is clean contrary to our doings. This is what they're doing. He upbraided us as our offending the law. I gave the law, Leviticus 20 and 13. I read it to you. From my mind to your mind. An objective to our infamy, the transgression of our education. He possesses, he, pos he possesses to have the knowledge of the Most High, and he has called himself the child of the Most High. He was made to approve our thoughts. He is grievous unto us, even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion, because we're dealing with the laws of the Most High, his rules and regulations. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits, phonies. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. Okay, we're reading this. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and make of his boast that the Most High is his father, which he is. Listen. For this cause, the Most High gave them up unto vile affections. Romans 1 26. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, meaning women with women. That's what it's talking about, because this is what it says next. And likewise, also the men 
leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet, which was right. And even as they did not like to retain the most high in their knowledge, that's why you hear what he's saying, our ways is a different fashion. We ain't no Christians. We don't roll like them. That's why we got to stop saying that. You know, we are Hebrew Israelites. We are the 12 tribes of Israel, point blank. Mosai gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things. Just a moment.